Hello, I'm Rezzy from Lowell Observatory and welcome to the Mars Hill Almanac. Let's go ahead and get started with the sun. The sun sets here in Flagstaff, Arizona at about 7.43 p.m. We are coming up on the summer solstice this month, that is June the 20th, when we will have our longest day of sunshine this year. Now we will be talking about the summer solstice more in other videos on the Lowell Observatory channel, so please be sure to stay tuned if you are curious. The moon rises here in Flagstaff at about 2.30 a.m. in its waning crescent phase. Over the next two weeks, it will hit its new phase, and then we'll see a waxing crescent up until about a nearly full moon the next time that we check in. Mercury is still up next to the sun at sunset, but it is so close to the sun that it is very difficult to spot. Jupiter rises at about 10 p.m. with its parade of planets trailing behind it, Saturn, and a couple hours later, Mars. Venus is low on the eastern horizon in its crescent phase just before sunrise. If you're up early in the morning, you will see a very pretty display as Jupiter, Saturn, Mars, Uranus, and the Moon, and Venus make a beautiful line spanning across the entire ecliptic across the sky. Last week we talked about Lyra and its brightest star, Vega. And I mentioned very briefly that Vega was part of the Summer Triangle. So we're going to take a look at that Summer Triangle now. The Summer Triangle rises fully at about 10 p.m. here in Flagstaff tonight, but as we get further into the summer, it will be higher and higher in the sky, earlier and earlier. Vega makes up one bright part of the Summer Triangle right here. And then down here we have Deneb in Cygnus, which we're going to talk about a little bit more as a constellation. And then over here we have Altair, which is inside Aquila the Eagle. These three stars together are fairly bright and make up a giant triangle asterism in the sky. Now we'll talk about Aquila next week, but I want to go into more detail on Cygnus. Cygnus, the constellation, is a swan, and it's one of those constellations that I find actually does kind of look like what it's supposed to look like. Deneb, the brightest star in Cygnus, right here, makes up Cygnus's little feathery butt, and then there's this line that extends outwards over here to Albireo. We're going to talk about Albireo more in just a second. So you see that line from Deneb to Albireo, and then you have these wings coming off right here and right here. Cygnus lays in the Milky Way in the summer sky, so this is a good opportunity to see how dark the sky in your backyard is. When you look up at Cygnus, if you see a Milky Way, you're at a pretty decent dark sky sight. For this week's Deep Sky Challenge, we're going to go ahead and take another look at Albireo. Albireo is a binary star, though we're not actually sure if it is a physical binary star or if they just look really close to one another in the sky. However, it is one of our favorite binary stars to point at. That's because if you put a telescope on Albireo here, you'll see two stars of drastically different colors. This orange one is the brighter star, and then you've got this little blue star right here. That color difference is caused by their temperatures. The blue star is about three times hotter than the orange one. If Albireo was really easy for you, you can go ahead and give the open cluster M39 a try. Because Cygnus is in the Milky Way, there are a lot of open clusters near it, but M39 is one of the easier ones to spot. M39 lays right about here, a little bit north of Deneb and a little bit closer to the horizon. The stars in this open cluster were formed together and are actually very close to one another in the sky. Now, as we're starting to get into the time of the year where the Milky Way is so prominent in the sky, this week, we want to hear from you. Specifically, I want to hear about your backyard Milky Way. Many cities, especially here in Arizona, have light ordinances to maintain the dark night skies for all of the observatories like Lowell around but not everybody has these dark sky protections. 
So from where you live, can you see the Milky Way in your backyard? And if not, if you go and you stargaze, where do you go to get a dark sky? If you have no idea, it's totally worth it to look up some observing sites nearby. Even big metropolitan areas generally have somewhere about an hour away from the city where lights are turned off and you can have a stunning view of the sky. It is worth it to do a little bit of investigation. Well, that about wraps up this week's session of the Mars Hill Almanac. We will be hearing from you in another two weeks. Until then, thank you so much for viewing, and I look forward to hearing from you.